we have applied to the Electoral Commission to change the name of the party from the Brexit party to Reform UK, because we believe there is so much as we look forward uh, as to how the country is run and governed. There's so much that can be improved, that needs changing, so that actually government works for the people. And the first thing that we think needs reforming is, of course, the government's approach to coronavirus, which, with another lockdown, we think will uh, decimate uh, what's left of the economy, of businesses, of jobs, at a time when actually all the evidence around the world, Nick, shows that lockdowns don't work. What does, Mr Tice? Uh, we, if lo- and well, I, I, I hear you, actually, and I, I think actually, you're, you're on a what sound footing. What does work very clearly is the sort of thing that we've seen being used, for example, uh, the approach being employed in Sweden or Japan. And actually what they are doing is a form of the approach adopted and recommended by the Great Barrington Declaration, by these fantastic experts, epidemiologists, thousands and thousands of medics led by those at Oxford and Harvard and Stanford who recommend that we have a much better, higher quality, focused protection of the vulnerable, uh, those that need shielding, those that have got medical conditions, so that the rest of us, with sensible, good hygiene measures, that actually we can get on with our lives. And that way, Nick, what we do is we learn to have the courage to stand up and face into this virus. And we learn to live with it. We don't hide behind the sofa in fear of it. And the evidence really is, Nick, at the moment, there are not excess deaths every week across the country. They are within a couple of percent of the normal five-year average. And I just think the government have got this badly wrong. They're relying on the scientists from Imperial Colleges, Imperial College, and they're ignoring other evidence, as I say, from the likes of uh, those promoting the Great Barrington Declaration. The Great Barrington, of course, was signed by a number of scientists. But I hear what you say, and if you look at the Daily Told, and we need to say commiserations and condolences for everyone involved, but many, many more people will have died yesterday from cancer or heart disease than die from COVID. But, of course, Mr Tice, COVID has the potential to be a virus on the level with something such as Spanish flu. Uh, Cancer or heart disease initially does not. Surely you recognise that. Well, the point is, Nick, as you said, sadly, every day in the UK, 1,600 people die of a variety of illnesses or just through old age. And as I say, the reality is at the moment, there are no excess deaths. What's happening is that COVID-related deaths on death certificates are replacing flu and pneumonia deaths, by and large, where those numbers are well below the five-year average. And we have to put this in context. And of course, the government have got a difficult job. And of course, you know, you have to balance all of the issues. But the but real danger is we, we know the lockdowns now don't work. And what's happening now is... Well, you, you, you say that. I mean, I, I have to problem. challenge you. I hear what you say about Sweden. But if you look at what's happening in France, if you look at what's happening in Germany, Spain, Italy, I won't run through the list. You know you're going with this. Are, are you saying that presented with information that we understand Boris Johnson was, that they were going to have to use ice rinks to contain the, the number of dead bodies, you would continue to keep the country open? Let's be very clear. SAGE's sole responsibility is to try and make recommendations to the Prime Minister how to reduce the COVID virus. They don't look at the whole balanced economy, the overall balance to other people's health. And the danger, Nick, is that more non-COVID patients will suffer and lose thousands more life years because they're not having cancer, they're not having lung, they're not having cardiac uh, issues diagnosed and treated early enough. And what, what really shocked me over the weekend was when I learned that more people now are committing suicide in London than dying through COVID. And I'm hearing from pathologists and from coroners, they are horrified at the increase in number of people committing suicide. And I think it would be really good, actually, if we saw the data on that so people really understand the impact on people's mental health. I know of undergraduates who've committed suicide, of 88-year-old ladies who've okay. committed suicide. I, I will. To put this in perspective, okay. we have to re- understand the cure is now worse than the problem. Re- 